All right, guys, in this video, we're going to walk through another sample College Board question dealing with Unit 3 content, that's electric fields and electric potentials. And this, was an, this one is an experimental design-based question. And remember, that's, well, if it was a full AP exam this year, you would expect to see one experimental design-based question uh, with a limited time frame this year. Uh, I'm not sure if you'll see one, but you might. So this is a good one to go through. So um, it reads, uh, and this is a publicly released question, so... It's okay that we have this here on YouTube. It says you are to determine the magnitude and electron the magnitude and direction of the electric field at a point between two large parallel conducting plates. The two plates have equal but opposite charges, but it is not known which is positive and which is negative. The plates are mounted vertically on insulating stands. It says a small ball of known mass M with a small charge positive Q of known magnitude is provided. The ball is attached to an insulating string. The additional laboratory equipment available includes only those items listed below, plus stands and clamps as needed. Choose the equipment you would use to make measurements needed to determine the magnitude and direction of the electric field between the two plates. And so they give you things like a meter stick, a spring scale, a metal rod, a camera, a stopwatch, protractor, etc. You can see these right here. And um, we have to figure out the size of the electric field between two parallel plates. Remember, between two parallel plates or capacitor plates, the strength of the electric field is uniform or constant. So no matter where you place that little positive charge Q, it's going to feel the same size electric force. And here's our equation for the strength of the electric field. At any region in space, if you take a little chest charge of known charge Q, and you're able to measure the size of the electric force on that charge, you take the amount of force it feels in newtons divided by the amount of charge on the test charge in coulombs, and you'll get the strength of the electric field in units of newtons per coulomb. Or, remember, that's the same thing as volts per meter. But So um, there's different ways you can do this, and here's the way that, that I thought about doing this. Here's our two uh, vertically mounted parallel electric pl uh, capacitor plates that are charged. You know, one has a positive charge, one has a negative charge. And it said we don't know which is which, but I, I just said just for the sake of the diagram, the one on the right has a positive charge and the one on the left has the net negative charge. And again, uh, it's going to produce a uniform strength electric field that points away from the positive charge to the negative charge. And we need to figure out, like we said, well, if we take that little thing with charge on it, the little ball of mass M with known charge positive Q, if we can figure out how big the force, the electric force it feels is, and divide by Q, we can figure out the size of the electric field. So um, I decided to take like a meter stick because it's an insulator and you can hang on to it without, let's say, neutralizing the amount of charge on here. And it's also an insulating string. So I guess whether you have that or not, I guess it doesn't matter. But if we imagine, if, you know, normally if this ball's, it's going to hang down vertically because of gravity, if it's not in the electric field. But if this object is placed in the electric field, a positive charge will feel an electric force in the direction of the electric field lines. And so that little object is going to feel a force to the left. And so it's going to essentially swing or get deflected from vertical to the left. And then um, it should just stay there. It should remain at rest. So this would be an equilibrium. All the forces are balanced. And if we can f measure like how much, like how many degrees does it swing from vertical, and we know the mass of this object, and we know some other things, we should be able to calculate the size of the electric force. Then we just divide by Q, and that would give us the size of the electric field. And then the direction of the electric field would just be which direction this uh, positively charged mass swings. If it swings to the left, that means it's swinging away from the positively charged plate, right? So if it swings to the left, um, if it's, yeah, if it swings to the left, whatever plate it swings away from, essentially, that would be the positive charge. Let's just say that. Okay, so um, I had a camera here so we could take a picture of uh, this and what it is, like deflected either to the left or the right. And then we could use a protractor on, like, let's say if we put that uh, image on a computer screen, we could measure how far from vertical that that mass has swung. So here's my simple 
experimental procedure which you need to outline. So I said, number one, hang the small ball from a meter stick with the attached string. Number two, use the camera to take a picture of the ball when it is at rest and the string is deflected from vertical. So we're taking two pictures, one one is and that's at rest and one one is deflected from vertical. And then for step number three, we're going to use the protractor to measure the string's angle from vertical from the image on a large display. So all we really need to do experimentally here, since we know the mass of the object, we know the amount of charge on it, all we need to do is experimentally measure what theta is right there. So part D, uh, part one of part D ex says, explain how you would calculate the magnitude of the electric field. So um, we already said that, um, well, we need to get the size of the electric force divided by Q. So we just need to figure out an expression for the size of the electric force on that little object that's hanging from the string. So I made a force diagram, a free body diagram for the forces that that mass feels. Well, it's going to feel a gravitational force directed down. Um, since based on the diagram it's deflected to the left, there's going to be tension that's like pulling up and to the right on that mass because it's feeling like the diagram was drawn an electric force to the left. Well, if this mass is in equilibrium, there's no acceleration in the x or y direction. The sum of the forces in both directions, horizontally and vertically, must be zero. So what's balancing out the electrostatic force to the left? It's the x component of the tension pulling to the right. And what is balancing out the, the negative vertical gravitational force? Well, it's the y component of the tension pulling up. So the y component of the tension is the same as gravity. And the x component of tension is the same as the electrostatic force. And so uh, we could make this little triangle where the tension is the hypotenuse, and the horizontal piece is the same size as the electrostatic force, and the vertical component of tension is the same size as gravity. So um, remember, theta right here, that's the angle we wanted to measure using our camera and our protractor. How far from vertical in degrees is that tension? because that's going to be the same as the angle between the y component of tension and the actual force of tension, or the, um, force of, the size of the force of gravity and the, y, the actual force of tension. So um, how can we relate the force of gravity and the, electro, the electrostatic force and this angle theta that we measured experimentally? We can do that with a tangent equation, because tangent is equal to opposite the length of the opposite side divided by the length of the adjacent side. So the tangent of this angle is equal to the opposite side, Fe, divided by the adjacent side, which is Fg. So we get tangent of theta. Tangent of theta is equal to Fe divided by Fg. If we rearrange this, since we're trying to figure out the side of the electrostatic force, Multiply each one of these sides by the force of gravity, so it cancels out on the right-hand side, and, we, and it gets added to the left-hand side, so we get that the electrostatic force is equal to the force of gravity times the tangent of theta. And if we know, if we're given the mass as m, the force of gravity is just m times the gravitational field strength, or m times g, multiplied by the tangent of theta. And so this expression right here, this is the size of the electric force on that hanging mass, so we substitute that in here in our electric field equation. So we get mg tangent theta divided by the charge that feels that force, and that's just lowercase q. And so this is an expression for the size or the magnitude of the electric field um, in between those capacitor plates of known mass m, that object divided by the, the measured and known charge, lowercase q. Now we briefly discussed this, but here's some diagrams to kind of help us figure this out. Remember, the other thing was not only determining the size of the electric field, but um, the di what direction would the electric field be in. Well, that little object of mass m had a positive charge, and we know that positive charges will feel a force in the direction of the net electric field. So if the net electric field is to the left, that little object would swing to the left, then we know the field is pointed to the left. But if the positive charges were on the left and the negative charges were on the right, the electric field would be pointing to the right, and we would expect that hanging mass to swing to the right instead. 
So whichever direction the hanging mass with positive charge swings, that is the horizontal direction of the net electric field between those capacitor plates. And how would we know the last part? Explain how you would determine which plate is positive. Well, um, we know that the electric field lines go away from positive charges and toward negative charges. And so if in this case up here, this object swung to the right, that means it's swinging away from the positive plate towards the negative plate. So if it swings to the right, the positive plate is on the left. Or if uh, we find experimentally that hanging object swings to the left, it must be swinging away from the positively charged plate on the right.